Uh, good afternoon. Again, my name is uh, Jesse Martinez. I work at Los Alamos National Labs um, on the network administrator team uh, for all our HPC clusters. Um, so today we're going to talk about some of the issues that we saw with our InfiniMan um, routed clusters and how we try to propagate that into um, coming up with an ideal solution about how to fix the routing issues that we saw. Um, so just over the top, what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be able to find here and give some um, possible uh, solutions for these issues um, is that high-speed networks, or in this case, InfiniBand routing, is a, a very complicated uh, piece of software written in the SM to help identify or help uh, create routes on the fabric. Um, and that a lot of assumptions go into from uh, designing these, these routing algorithms into the real-world situations. Um, and with that, very few assumptions are held depending on how the fabric is actually set up um, and laid out depending on how you deploy it in your environments. Um, so we're going to be talking about how we tested this, uh, um, this scalability that we saw in our fabrics um, and how that it's very important to understand how you want to lay out your fabrics in a real world, real world situ uh, situation um, in terms of um, optimizing your network. Um, and then lastly, uh, depending on what kind of fabric you're using and uh, deploying it for, um, if you have any of these uh, type of IO nodes um, or any kind of router on your fabric that's um, converting from between InfiniBand to other types of networks in your environment, um, how it's best to not keep those IO nodes or routers on the same leaf switch or, or line card on your fabric, and we'll explain why that might be the issue. Um, so as Susan mentioned yesterday, we recently deployed a couple of Lustre file systems um, in our environment. Um, we were getting rid of Panassas, and we need to start deploying these newer systems on our IB fabric um, instead of our Ethernet backbone. Um, so L1 and L2 came into our unclassified network called the Turquoise Network. Um, and soon after that, we were uh, deploying a third file system um, that was going to be made up of EDR switches. And if you remember from Susan's presentation yesterday about how that transition came to be um, between an uh, FDR and Finiman backbone to an EDR when the L3 file system came in. Um, so now at this point, all three file systems were on this new EDR fabric that we had just deployed. And we wanted to do some testing to make sure that this new fabric in correlation with the L3 file system um, had good performance as to what we expected with this deployment. Um, so part of it, again, was to test some bandwidth use uh, cases with one of our existing clusters um, called Wolf, which was an InfiniBand connected uh, cluster to this Lustre file system fabric. Um, and we used uh, reservations that we had during this downtime to do some heavily, uh, intensive heavily uh, performance tests between the cluster itself and the Lustre file systems. In this case, we began with L3 since it was a new one. Um, and with that testing, though, we ran into a huge issue. We expected to have about 55 gigabytes second worth of performance between that cluster um, to this file system, and we were seeing only about 19 gigabytes a second. And that was uh, based on, uh, again, the node allocation that we had at that time. Um, and in this case, was uh, 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 we were the only people on the fabric during these testing during this time. Um, and these results were pretty much consistent with every single time we tested. It didn't matter on the size of the job we were running, uh, the node allocation that we had, um, during the allocated time, um, we were, and the size of the file system that we were using, it seemed to be pretty consistent. So just a quick overview about how this cluster was actually connected to the fabric. Um, again, we have these three file systems that were on this IB backbone that we had just finished creating with a, a new EDR backbone setup. And now we uh, were going to do our testing from this Wolf fabric that had these uh, IO nodes, or in this case, we were using them as LNet routers between the Wolf fabric and the Lustre fabric. And how uh, we wanted to test and see if the LNet routing that we were doing at that time, in that case, was FGR, if it was having any effect now that we had three file systems on this fabric. So we, we began uh, doing some more in-depth analysis using Wolf to figure out why we were seeing that such slow performance with this new introduction of the third file system. Uh, a little bit of information about the Wolf cluster itself. It is an Intel TrueScale uh, chassis uh, internal fabric. Uh, it's running at QDR. We have uh, 18 uh, spine cards within that fabric um, with 36 ports each. And then each of those have about um, 648 possible internal spine ports for the routers on that fabric um, with the, the 36 line cards that we have on that chassis. Um, as you know, the IB routing is not symmetric. Um, on the fabric. So with that, we have about over 408,000 route, possible routes throughout the whole entire wolf fabric that we could uh, play with. 
Um, we're running OpenSM as the subnet manager on what we call the master node for the fabric, which is the, essentially the node that boots the cluster. Um, running as a fat tree algorithm with up down as its secondary. Um, by default, we had port shifting enabled to true, and I'll explain why that wasn't a huge case for um, our, our testing during this time. Um, and then one important note to uh, mention is on this fabric, as you saw from this previous diagram, we have 24 IO nodes that were connected between Wolf and the Lustre file, uh, the file system fabric. Um, each of those 24 IO nodes were connected to 24 separate leaf sw switches on the Wolf fabric. Um, An important note is to mention that they were all on the same port on those different line cards, in this case, port 18. Uh, so we began some more detailed analysis about why we were seeing that performance with L3. And we started testing L1 and L2 performance that we had some better numbers with. And we started seeing that same degradation in performance. We were seeing uh, that roughly that same number of 19 gigabytes a second, where we expect a lot higher between 40 and 55 gigabytes a second. Um, but so since we had more data with the L2 file system, um, we had had it for about a couple more months longer than the L3 system. We had some more data points, so we decided to start focusing our attention on L2 since we had more data points. Um, and, and because of our deployment for all these file systems, again, it was relatively new to Los Alamos that we were testing with these luster fabrics um, and then again testing with FGR. Uh, we didn't have too much time to be testing fully to get the full analysis that we had wanted when we started deploying these. So because of end of year constraints and some uh, scheduling issues that we had, we had to get these systems deployed pretty fast. So L3 was added to the backbone knowing that about that degraded performance, but we decided to go ahead and continue our efforts to see if we could figure out how to improve that better. Um, so as I mentioned, our testing shifted to L2. Um, so we started focusing on how our nodes, our nodes were allocated on the fabric itself. And we realized that most of our testing during our dedicated time of um, testing the fabric, that they were all contiguous on the fabric. Uh, the the uh, point listing of nodes on the same line card or depending on what size we're doing, they were pretty contiguous on the fabric itself. Um, as we started testing with users on it now during production, we started getting allocations that were more non-contiguous across the fabric. And that's when we started seeing our same performance that we were seeing before, in this case, between 35 and 40 gigabytes a second. So we realized that there was an issue with how we were allocating the nodes, either uh, contiguous or non-contiguous, that that was having a huge impact about um, with our performance with the Lustre file system, in this case, L2. Uh, so we started looking more about the looking at more at the wolf fabric to see if we can find any type of um, issues that we were seeing on the fabric to help mitigate this issue. Um, and then again, this held with even the, the different sizes of node allocations that we had. It didn't matter how many nodes we had; it just mattered that they were either contiguous or non-contiguous on the fabric that we saw these issues. Um, so every single time we ran these tests, they were reproducible. We thought that was very interesting. And we thought that we needed to look more at our routing in general on the Wolf fabric. Um, we did verify that the routing algorithm was running fat tree on the Wolf uh, chassis. Um, and in this case, uh, port shifting and scatter ports weren't uh, applied at this time or weren't uh, applicable because they were only used for up down routing. So we didn't look too closely at that um, for this use case since we were using fat tree. Um, so we decided to look at more uh, what was going on with the routes during these tests. Um, so we uh, modified one of our existing monitoring um, processes that we have at the labs. Um, IBMON, if you were here a few years ago, we um, presented some uh, presentations about that. Um, we re-modulated uh, it to be more um, consistent with just testing to see what the routes were through the spines um, and the fabric in general at that time. And then we plotted all those graphs in Splunk, uh, which is our primary monitoring tool at the labs. So this is kind of what it looked like. Uh, these two graphs here um, are from Splunk, and each of these graphs are how much data has been going through each uh, spine on the fabric. So when we started testing uh, with our contiguous and non-contiguous node, nodes, we noticed that a majority of the data through each of the spines was actually going through only two spines on the fabric. And we thought that was very interesting. So with the slower number that we saw with contiguous, we saw them going through two. And then when we re-ran re those tests with um, non-contiguous nodes, we still saw the same a routing instance with only two spine parts majority being used on the fabric. Even though we were seeing the performance that we were expecting, we still saw a majority of the routes going through those two spine cards. So we thought, well, that, that's still an interesting aspect. Even though we were getting the performance we expected, um, it wasn't quite what the routing should have been between the compute nodes on the fabric to these IO nodes to the file system. <clears throat> 
So here's a more detailed analysis about what we did um, as soon as we saw those spikes in those spines. We went ahead and used IB trace route to pull all the routes between the, our compute nodes that we were using for testing and analyze the routes between uh, those compute nodes and the IO nodes on the fabric. And this is where we saw a huge issue right here. So on the left is with our contiguous test. Here we saw about over 96% of the routes were going through only four ports on one spine card to go from those compute nodes to the IO nodes on the fabric. So out of the about 1,000 routes that were possible from the compute nodes to IO nodes, a majority of them were going through only four ports on one spine card. And again, we see these two only, only these two spine cards being used. Uh, for our non-contiguous, again, from the previous graph, we did see that both only two spine cards were or spine cards are being used at that time, but they were a lot more spread out over that same roughly amount of routes through the possible spines. Um, a more majority of them were going through one or two spines on the fabric. Uh, so then we decided to do some more testing with how the routing was implemented and how we could influence it to change based on our routing needs. Um, in this case, we we're focusing more on the compute node aspect. Um, getting the compute nodes to the IO nodes to get to the file system itself. So this is an overview of all the compute node routes to an IO node route on that same wolf fabric. Um, and this is before we start doing any tests. Again, this is just another uh, diagram of how the, the routes look like overall on the fabric. Again, a majority of the routes mostly being on two uh, spine uh, cards at this time. Uh, so one of the first things we started testing with is with the IO GUID file. Since we were running a factory algorithm on this fabric, um, we started implementing this in test to see if that can help balance out the routes a little bit, and this is the result of that. Um, we saw we did get a huge better performance um, increase with implementing the IO no GUID file, but again, majority of the routes still only on one uh, spine card out of the whole entire fabric. Um, and again, that was spread up between the multiple ports on that spine card, um, but still not the balance that we wanted to see on that fabric itself. Um, so we did one more test, and as you remember before, we had all the IO nodes on one, uh, the same port on the 24 different line cards. We went ahead and physically moved the IO nodes um, placement on those leaf uh, or line cards into randomized ports on the fabric itself, and this is the result of that. From the compute nodes to all the IO nodes, the routes look a lot better, symmetric as we would see between a compute node and an IO node route. So not all the routes were going through a few ports on one spine. They were more spread out across all of them. So that was when we saw the better performance numbers between a contiguous and a non-contiguous allocation, and that's what we expected to see for that cluster. Um, and then this is just kind of a general overall route uh, routing uh, table of all the routes on the fabric, not just between compute and IO nodes, but uh, compute, compute, IO to IO, compute to IO node, et cetera. Um, so after the changes, before the uh, after the changes with the IO node movement, all the general routes pretty much stayed the same, even though the compute to IO node routes um, increased trem uh, tremendously in terms of performance usage. Um, but the overall route count on each of the spine cards on the fabric pretty much stayed the same. Uh, we went ahead and started looking at some other clusters now that we had. Um, Wolf was just one of our main clusters since it was IB connected to the Luster fabric. We went ahead and started looking at some other clusters that were Ethernet connected using those Elnet routers that Susan described yesterday, um, getting to the Luster fabric. So this is before any changes we saw. We used that, those same uh, routing um, scripts that we used to generate from the Wolf fabric and test them on what we call Mustang, is another open, uh, uh, open science cluster um, at LANL. And again, uh, the fabric itself is made up of three core chassis switches and broken out into uh, many different leaf switches to make the fat tree um, fabric for that cluster. Um, and as you saw again, we see that same uh, amount of balance between uh, compute to IO node routes on only a, uh, a handful of spine ports um, on that fabric. And this is a graph of all the different spine ports um, and line cards we have there um, and how many routes are going through them. So we went ahead and tried to do the same testing again. Uh, with the IO GUID file, you can see that the routes did change a little bit, not too much as we had, um, had expected from the wolf testing, but did help to balance them out a little bit more. Um, they did decrease now, um, still with some spikes and some supports um, on the spine cards, um, but not enough to have it a complete uh, balance of routes between compute and IO node. Um, and then again, our final test was now testing with move, physically moving the IO nodes, and we actually saw an uh, uh, interesting point here where um, the routes between the compute and the IO nodes didn't make a difference at all with physically moving them. Um, but one thing to note here is that uh, Mustang was set up a little bit differently where we have multiple IO nodes on, 
of only a handful of leaf or, or line cards on the fabric. Um, so not just one like we had on Wolf. We had about four or five ion nodes on these line cards. Um, so physically moving them on that same switch did not help in uh, balancing those routes out in general. So um, as a use case, as I mentioned before, having those multiple IO node routes or routers on one line card was not sufficient to have the, the bandwidth or route balance on the fabric that you needed. And then finally, we looked at one of our secure clusters, again, set up with three core chassis switches and a, a fat tree routing algorithm, again. Um, and then this is the before changes we had. Again, saw those same spikes between compute and IO nodes. Um, but with this cluster, it helped a lot more after Ruth implying the IO node GUID file. We did see the routes balance out a little bit more, still with the same spikes on certain spine cards on the fabric, um, but a lot better from the previous graph of having almost 1,000 on a couple. Um, on each of those line spine cards. And then again, Luna was set up the same way as Mustang. We had a couple of IO nodes on the same uh, line cards. So physically moving them on the same switch actually made performance a little bit worse between the, or the routing between the compute and IO node. Um, and then here's just a quick comparison about uh, that implement uh, change on Luna. Um, the IO node GUID file has helped to balance out the routes a lot better than actually physically moving the routes on that fabric. Again, having multiple IO nodes on that same line card made a huge um, impact about how the routes are actually separated out between the spine ports on the fabric. So now with all these testing, we are, we are able to do some more deep analysis with our users now. Every time they come with us about so many routing algorithm um, questions or issues that they see with their job on the fabric, um, we can implement these scripts now to see what kind of routes uh, their compute cluster or their compute job is doing um, on the fabric. So this is just one use case that we had a job, a user uh, complaining about performance on his uh, job. We ran the same uh, routing algorithm scripts that we had, and we noticed that pretty much majority of the routes were semi-balanced, so we're able to move forward with um, some other routing algorithms or some other uh, testing to fix this issue. Um, so again, just reiterating some of the conclusions I talked about in the beginning. Um, the, the routing algorithms that is developed from the OpenSM is extremely complicated, does a very good job of balancing out the whole fabric in general, but doesn't have enough nicks and crannies to help actually decide whether or not this node needs more of the bandwidth or needs more um, separated out routes to get from this type of node to another node. Um, overall, in general, the, the high-speed uh, routes on the fabric um, do a very good job of helping to give the performance on the, in a fat tree routing algorithm. Um, but it's up to the user now to actually decide how they want to implement that, to look at these route balances to see is, is that how the fabric um, you want to set up? Is it set up in the way that you want? And are you taking into consideration all the possible routes through a certain number of ports on the fabric? And then again, the last note, and most importantly, having the, the same um, number of IO nodes on one leaf switch or one line card is not a good implementation. If, you're, if your fabric is mostly in general from compute to IO node to get to, to the fabric, um, may not be a good implementation depending on how the routes, again, are balanced out. Um, this may be different some other clusters held depending on how many nodes you employ, uh, what type of nodes on the fabric you deploy, um, but for instance, um, getting from compute to IO node to get to the file systems was a huge uh, issue we ran into when in deploying these cluster fabrics and um, uh, mitigating these in these types of ways helped a lot better. Um, some of the changes we made didn't quite help, but overall we're going to be looking at all our clusters now to see if there's anything we can do to help improve that overall. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions, please let me know. All right. Thank you very much.